neutral pelvis stack versus posterior tilt stack? Which, when? Well, we can't necessarily say uh, if we have a neutral position versus a posterior, versus a posterior tilt because, I mean, we, there, there is necessarily no such thing as neutral because we are moving throughout. But most individuals, when you're dealing with compensatory strategies, they're going to be sitting way anterior. So what you want to do is you want to get them to tuck their hips somewhat posteriorly. But what I don't want, and I did a full debrief on this, don't worry, it'll be in the show notes, where I get a situation where I posteriorly tilt to such a degree that the, the lumbar spine goes along for the ride. So if you see the pelvis go way forward, and perhaps they got a bulge at one particular segment of the lumbar spine, we don't want that. So the tuck is subtle. What you want is you want a slight posterior tilt. They should perceive, depending on the position that you, you use, proc, or distal glute proximal hamstring, and you shouldn't have much ab tension when you're coaching that. If you get that, that's enough. That's going to allow the pelvis to get into position to promote the dynamic movement that we should see in the viscera during a breath cycle. The visceral movement that happens with inhalation and exhalation is what's going to restore the relative motion that we should see at the SI joint, namely counternutation and nutation. So we want just enough that the client perceives glutes and hamstrings working. And if they can't, they don't have the interoception to perceive that, you can even have them palpate those areas to see if those are kicking in. You just want that, and then you're going to coach the breathing as we've talked about in previous debriefs. Hopefully that clarifies.